now that the stock model is set up and in the model tree where it's supposed to be under toolpath group one okay where we're going to be doing some more toolpaths let's explore a little bit farther we're going to do opti rough here just like we've seen in the video we're going to set this to 0 0.005 I agreed with all that. Now we're going to use our pointer to select. So once we highlight one surface of this, three clicks is going to give us the whole thing and the selection. And then we're going to move on to toolpath control. Now, oh, I forgot something, right? I forgot to create a boundary in order to be able to keep the inmill inside. Well, that's going to be pretty easy. We're just going to select that as OK. This is all going to look goofy because it's incomplete. <clears throat> Wireframe, circle point, and listen, I'm moving fast because you guys have already seen this. And I'm going to create a nice circle to stay with inside of. Okay, check that. And now I can go back here to parameters and continue on with what I was doing. So again, I want to select my containment boundary. So I want to keep all of the activities inside of this boundary here and then select OK. Now, just as a note, if we bring that up, we can clear it if we need to, remove selected, and then of course we can select it again, but bringing it up here, if it's on solids, it's looking for a solid. And if you're trying to do a chain here, you're gonna look for that, the wireframe, and then we can select this and check that. <clears throat> Now something else that you need to realize too is, is that this include silhouette boundary should be unchecked. What would happen if you check that? It would try to create a tool path between that line and the part all the way around to clear all that material out. So in this case, it's most appropriate to leave this unchecked. If not, you're going to see a whole bunch of lines that you weren't expecting to see. We want to stay inside of this boundary. Again, that's the big boundary here. We want to stay inside of it, and center is perfect. So the tool, we have our 3 8 flat. It's two. Tool number two, we're going to do the 25 inches a minute at 4,000 RPM and 50 for the plunge and rapid, whoop, rapid retract, so we're good there. Older, we don't care. Now this here is where things start to come together. So I'm moving this off to the side so you can see the model a little bit over here because rest material is the, the important part of this. This here is what realizes that you have a stock model and here's how you make those two match. Rest material, think of this as the rest of the material, how much material is left on there. And so by selecting that, it starts opening up some other options. Now you can do all previous operations. In this case, I wanna show you one other operation. Now there is only one operation, which is right here. It's stock material or stock model, and it has been highlighted. That means that it's going to consider that to the outskirts of this and that whole block that's the whole piece of material there so it's going to base all of your other parameters off of removing the material that you've put there so if your stock model is twice that size it will continue to add um, tool pads in order to remove that material so that's the correlation between your your stock model and this this operation here now, as we go further it'll make a little bit more sense so remember, the rest of the material, one other operation, and we want to get rid of that stock model. Cut parameters. We're going to blow through this. You've already seen this. We're going to change this to 15%. That's a nice high efficiency. Step down, what does that mean? This is a percentage of your end mill diameter. Okay, so your end mill is 3 eighths. We want to go down 3 quarters. So that's twice, right? So 200%. And that's what the deal is with that. And then, of course, the step, and that's all in one shot, right? And then this right here, the step up, he put this in at 0 
you can do that, but we don't have any tapered walls, so it doesn't really matter. The rest of this stuff looks okay. Again, don't get hung up on these items here, but the step down is 200%. If you did 10%, it would do like 37 thousandths and do a whole bunch of passes. So 200%, we make sure we get right to the bottom and then we start cutting out with a 15% step over. And again, those are things that we can talk about later as far as high efficiency tool pads. Transitions, we want to find things that are important. Entry feeds, we probably don't want to go 50 inches a minute down, so we're going to go to 15. We're not going to mess with the spindle speed. We'll leave it at 4,000 that we originally set it up with, and we don't want to dwell. Now this right here, remember the just the stock to leave correlates with the geometry, right? It calls on this wall stock and floor stock. That is, that's where that information is coming from. Minimum depth is zero, the maximum is, remember, it's negative 0.75 is how far we're going down. That's how far from here down we're actually cutting. Linking parameters, most of this stuff looks good. It's on absolute full vertical retract is great. All of this here, I'm not concerned with it for our purposes for this lesson. And we'll go ahead and turn the coolant on, not that it's super important. And we're gonna check that. Now remember, I started off and then I forgot to do this boundary, so I stopped. Um, that's why there's an X here on this toolpath. But very simply, if we cl uh, left click this, it's going to bring this up. Choose an option. Don't regenerate and continue or regenerate. Yeah, we want to regenerate. So when we regenerate, it gave us a little preview of that toolpath and immediately went the back plot. And just as he did before, I really like that idea. And you can go up here and hover over any one of these items and it will tell you what it is. Like for instance, quick verify, or you can click options. And I like going to interpolate <clears throat> 200 thousands is wonderful. Click that, and then I can actually step through this program. And I can hold it. And I can see it cut away. Where I can just play it. And so you'll have to notice here the orange that has been created because of my color scheme gives you an idea of, of what material is actually being taken out. And you can play with those colors, but we'll look at that at a different point. All right. So that's the end of that one, right? So we'll rotate this around and we'll see what's going on here. So let's talk about what happened and correlate it to what we've done. So again, we started with the stock model and because we started with the stock model, it is it made just enough paths to go around here and remove the material that was left on the outside of the part. It likewise did here, remove the material on the inside of the part, and remove the material here. The main takeaway from this video should be this is how the stock model has to be set up in order to use it to make the appropriate tool path to remove the amount of material and, and the material from where you want to remove it at.